Why, we from the birds to sing a freshly song. And there's the latest music in the air. The Palmer's grief reverberates across the first season and a half of Twin Peaks. Sarah and Leland are fractured, inconsolable. At several points, we witness Leland breaking down, most often expressing his grief through manic musical performances that devolve into anguish. Later, we learn the truth. Leland, possessed by a dark spirit named Bob, murdered his own daughter. Once this truth has been revealed, Leland's expressions of sorrow take on a more sinister tone. Instead of simply signifying a father overcome by loss, I would argue that the show uses these musical moments to foreshadow Leland's inner struggle between his own psyche and Bob. The show creates associations between music and Bob in two primary ways, the Palmer family phonograph and Leland's public singing and dancing. We first see the phonograph in season one, episode three, Zen or the skill to catch a killer when Leland puts on a Glenn Miller record and dances, moaning, with a photograph of Laura. At this point in the story, the audience is meant to assume that we're watching a father unable to cope with his daughter's murder. However, when juxtaposed with a similar scene in season two, where Bob kills Laura's cousin Maddie, the earlier scene assumes darker undertones. One scholar poses, who would suspect that Pennsylvania 65000 actually accompanies a crucial scene in the murder detection plot, one of the earliest indicators of the deeply disturbing psychosexual connection between Leland and his daughter? Perhaps we're not watching a grieving father at all, but the cries of a demon attempting to take control. The show also constructs a relationship between Leland's multiple breakdowns and Bob. The strongest connection occurs between two scenes in the Hayward home in the beginning of the second season. In episode one of season two, May the Giant Be With You, the Haywards host the Palmers at a dinner party. The young Hayward daughters perform, and eventually, Leland decides to get up and sing to the group. God, I feel like singing. At first, it's amusing. But then he sings faster and faster. Sing hallelujah, come on, get happy. Sing hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. Sing hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment And is eventually overcome. In the next episode, Coma, James, Donna, and Maddie sit in the Hayward living room, singing the now iconic Just You and I. When Donna and James Donna. leave the room for a moment, Maddie looks toward the entry to the dining room, where in the previous episode, we saw Leland collapse. Slowly, around the corner, Bob emerges, crawling menacingly over the furniture toward the camera. This is the second time Maddie has had an ominous vision that, given what comes later, seems to portend her own death. Music is broadly significant in the world of Twin Peaks. God, I love this music. Isn't it too dreamy? It helps set the otherworldly tone that marks the series, and the creators utilize it to complicate our narrative expectations. 
After Leland slash Bob kills Maddie, Leland continues to sing. Only now, it's no longer tortured. Bob has won and, at least for now, no longer has to fight Leland for control of Leland's soul. Hi, Harry. Agent Cooper. <laughs> Just having a little fun. I'm Laura Ivins. Thank you for watching.